Believers, therefore, Paul said, are good citizens. Now think about the implications of that, because for a shocker to all of us, Paul, the voice of God, writing God's word down on paper for us, the first of our biblical responsibilities, he says, in chapter 13, verse 1, is to be subject, listen what it says, to the leader of your land in which you live. And what he was saying is, whenever you live, And wherever you live in the future, be subject to the leader of your land in whatever place you choose to live. Now, to us, that's fine if we're happy with the leader. What happens if you're unhappy? What if we get a leader we don't like? Well, that's covered too. This is quite a sweeping word from God that Paul gives us. But even more shocking is to step back and look at the man whose shadow fell across Paul's world, who happened to be the one about whom he was speaking in Romans 13. The world ruler at the time is infamous. His name was Nero. And while Nero was sitting in power at the center of the world, Paul says, be subject to your government, your authority, your emperor. Nero was a public sodomite. He paraded his male slave Floris around in public as his wife. He walked with a slave on his shoulder who clung to his arm, a male slave who was Nero's wife. This is how he went to the games, walking with his his male wife. I mean, just it's disgusting to even think of that. But Paul said Floris and Nero, though debased, depraved, defiled, and deliberately outspoken advocates of the homosexual lifestyle, Paul said, be subject to him. And he says the same to us, no matter what administration comes to power, wherever we live, whenever we live. So no matter what the character, I mean, people complained a couple of administrations ago about the profligacy of our leader. Mm -hmm. It's true. But you still are subject to them, Paul says. Does that mean fatalism? Does that mean uninvolvement? Does that mean we withdraw from society? Not at all. No one was more involved than Paul. He preached, he prayed, he wrote, he lived against sin in every form, at every level. As a citizen, you can be sure he voted in any manner he was allowed to because that's just type, the type of believer he was. He was involved. He, he treasured his citizenship. He spoke of his citizenship. And I'm sure that was backed up by being involved as a citizen. Paul was involved in his culture, in his country, and in the lives of all who would let him. But he had no delusions. Paul never thought he could change society. And I believe we've sapped a lot of the strength of the church because we think our job is to change society. It's not. It's to see individuals transformed by the saving work of Christ. That's where the energies are supposed to go. We are not trying to change society. Paul's only hope was to change individuals one at a time. Now, let's turn back to another book he wrote, Ephesians. So go Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, go to the right, Galatians. There it is, Ephesians chapter 5. Because he does speak about how we are to confront our culture, our society, our world in which we live. In Ephesians 5.11... Paul most likely wrote this letter from Rome where he sat in prison. So now he's gotten to where the epicenter of the Roman world, where this sodomite ruled by the name of Nero. And what does a citizen of heaven do when he's being subject, even to the point of being put in prison, to the powers that be? Well, in Ephesians, Paul adds the second element of our responsibility as believers. Not only are we to be good citizens, but we are also to, believers are to expose evil around them. We're not supposed to go through life hiding under our bushel. We're supposed to let our light shine, and when light shines, it shows the dirt. If you think about it, I remember the first time when I was pastoring in New England, I was invited over to one of those 200, three, actually it was 300-year-old house, and, and they invited us over after church and evening service. It was unbelievable. I think George Washington had probably been there. It was one of the most beautiful colonial homes with gardens and you know thick walls and candles in every window but when we came in the entire place was only lit by candles 
And we had the most delightful night. And we ate and talked with these people. But they sent us home something, and the next day Bonnie and I brought it back by. The light had come. (laughs) That was one of the most dirty, unbelievably cobweb-filled, dusty places. But do you know what? None of it showed. I mean, I I looked back at everything they ate that night, and I hoped there were no spiders in it. You know, uh, the next day when I went through this house with the sunlight coming through the windows, one of the joys of candlelight is you don't see the dirt. And if we are under our bushel and don't let our light shine, the dirt of the world goes unexposed. And so look what he says in Ephesians 5.11. The responsibility of a biblical Christian is to, Ephesians 5.11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. That's a present active imperative. The constant responsibility that we have as believers is to constantly be shedding the light of God's revelation on the culture around us. While in Scotland, uh, the home to so many of the great missionaries of the past generations, uh, the, the people, as they would drive us between the meetings, they say, oh, by the way, look over there. That's where so-and-so, oh, that's where the, you know, Eric Little is from the Chariots of Fire. He ran right on that beach. And oh, this is where Robert Murray McShane, and he preached and wrote his books and da-da-da-da. One of them that was amazing was a guy named Joffrey Bull. He was captured by the Chinese in 1950. He was a missionary to Tibet. What a fascinating story. His biography talks about the fact that everywhere he went in Tibet and China, he would, he would have a choice of either going along with the flow and letting them do the wickedness they were doing or say, no, that is wrong. God says it's wrong, even though the Chinese and Tibetan tribal culture said it was all right. And part of why he was in prison for three years and almost put to death was he exposed evil. Well, not just Geoffrey Bull, the missionary. Ephesians 5.11 commands every believer... And, and we have a responsibility as a biblical Christian to not only be subject to government, but to expose evil. And of all people on earth, we should have the most consistent loving advice. Abstain from everything that is evil. Expose it. Abstain from it. Have nothing to do with it. And we should constantly be, I mean, if people ask our opinion or if the platform is given for us to say whether something's right or wrong, we say God is opposed to that, and I agree with him. You can put the authority on him so you don't have to say it's just how I feel. 